Hello everyone, this is Pippin Williamson with Pippin's Pages and Pippin'sPlugins.com and in this video, part three of writing your first WordPress plugin, I'm going to take you a little bit further with the plugin that we started the other day. Um, if you haven't seen the plugin that we started, uh, you should actually go look at that tutorial first and you can actually get there by going to my site, Pippin'sPlugins.com, going to Tutorials, series and then writing your first WordPress plugin basic to advanced and there's two parts to it first so far first is how to begin writing your first WordPress plugin and second is structuring your first WordPress plugin so uh, definitely make sure that you follow this part right here before you jump into this one that I'm getting ready to talk to you about uh, but anyway so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to go a little bit further than what we've done uh, so far what I've done is I've shown you how to set up the structure for your plugin what I'm gonna do now is actually show you how to do something useful with the plugin and what we're gonna do is actually something that's pretty common uh, for people to do the first time they write a plugin and that is to add additional content uh, whatever we want to the end or the beginning of post um, so for example we're gonna take this post right here it's called another post with everything in it and we're gonna add a sentence at the beginning and at the end um, I'll show you how to put it at both places um, and then I'll actually describe to you some real-world scenarios where this is used uh, this is something that people do all the time in beginner tutorials except I think people actually fail to realize exactly how useful this trick is um, so I'll actually show you some real-world uh, scenarios where it's actually being used um, so uh, the first thing is we're going to jump in here to our plugin. It's still called my first WordPress plugin.php. Um, if you want uh, so everything that I've written so far, this file and the other couple files that I've included are all available as a download at the end of part two uh, on structuring your first WordPress plugin. So if you want to get a head start, if you haven't actually written all this yet, you can go download it and then start exactly where I am. Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to create a new file and we're going to call it, um, let's see, let's call it uh, slash display.php or display functions.php. Um, so now we actually need to go create that file. So here it is. We're going to leave a comment at the top that just kind of describes what this file is. Display functions for outputting information. Okay, we're going to save it. It's going to, it's going to go in includes, and it's going to be called display functions.php. Okay, so now both of our files are saved, um, and so now anything that we put in that file is now available to our plugin. So um, display content functions. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to write a simple function here um, that is basically going to f do a couple of things. Uh, but the main thing it's going to do is it's actually going to take the content of the currently displayed post and it's going to dis display extra, it's going to append extra content onto the bottom of that. Um, so let's do this. Uh, so it's my first WordPress plugin, that's our prefix, underscore um, add content. Uh, your name, your function can be named whatever you want, but always be try to be descriptive. Um, but so in this case I've just done add content because it actually kind of makes sense. Notice that I've also added a parameter up here called content. Um, what that is, is that's actually going to contain all of the content of the current post. Uh, you won't actually see that, it's just actually done in the background, uh, but you have to have that function in, the, in there in order for this to actually work. So now what we're going to do is we're going to write in a simple return statement like this, return content, and then we're going to append a little bit onto the end of it. Uh, so this is my extra content. Okay, so what we've done is this this right here, this content variable, is actually a string. Um, and when we do the space, dot, space, and then uh, in the single quotes, that's simply saying, basically, take this string and add this string to it. So, uh, now we've done that. Now at the bottom, we're going to run what's called a filter. And basically what this filter is doing is it's going to take the content of a post, um, in this case, the content, oops, so we're going to take the content function um, 
if you're familiar enough with WordPress templating and theming, you'll know that there's a function called the underscore content, which is actually used to display the post content. So this is basically saying add filter to the content function. And now what we're going to do is we're going to pass our function name as the second parameter, just like that. Okay, so now what's going to happen here is basically on every single post on your site, it's going to add this string called this is my extra content. We'll put a space in there just so we can see it a little bit easier. So let's go take a look. And there it is right there. This is my extra content. Okay, so this is really, really basic. So let's go a little bit further, especially because there's a couple problems with this. Number one is that that is actually now applied to every single post. And you also notice that it's displayed whether we're in an index, the home page, or if we're on a single post page. So we're going to fix that a little bit by doing something. What we're going to do is we're going to actually separate this out and we're going to put in a conditional statement. This conditional is called is underscore single. And what this means is that any time that we're on a single post page, uh, we want to run this. So uh, we've done that. And now what we're going to do is we're actually going to take this and we're going to say content dot equals that. Okay, so what this means, dot equals says basically add this onto the existing content. Um, I want to show you this to give you a demonstration. Let's just do that for a second and see what happens. You actually see that it's replaced all of the content with just this is my content. So what we need to do is we need to do the dot equals because that means append this on. Okay, so now we see this is my content is applied to the full content of the post. And if we go to the home page, now we don't see it anymore. So we only see that when we're on the single post page. Um, if you want, you can actually also do is sing uh, is singular. Uh, and now that will actually apply to both post and pages. So it's up to you which one you want to do. I'm going to leave it as is single for now, just like that. Okay, um, so what we've done is we've basically said, if we are on a single post page, modify our content. If we're not on a single post page, don't do anything. Just return the content as normal. Um, and this filter right here is actually very, very important for this because without it, that's not gonna happen. So here's what you can do with this. Basically, your content variable, or in this case where we have um, added additional information to the content, it can be anything you want. You can set up a giant HTML string. You could set up unordered list. You could set up social icons. Uh, you can add in extra PHP functions in here. You can do anything you want and append it to the content of the post. Um, it's up to you. It's limited to your imagination. But this right here is actually a really, really important trick to know. Um, it's very simple but it's extremely useful. So I want to show you something really quickly. Uh, I re a couple days ago, or a week or two ago, I released a plugin called User Bookmarks. I released it through the company called CG Cookie, CG Cookie Incorporated. Um, and anyway, that plugin, what it allows you to do is to bookmark your favorite post um, and save them to your personal bookmark list for the site. So I use this exact same trick to do this, to add bookmark this post to my to my pages, my post, etc. Uh, so if you go to any post, you'll see the option bookmark this post. Um, and then it's got some other functions and you'll see now that it's actually said remove bookmark. Um, so anyway, th this is a plugin that's using this exact same trick that I've just shown you here to, to accomplish that. So while this is a very, very simple example, you can go much, much further with it as I did in the user bookmarks plugin. Um, let me show you one other example where I did it. In um, my big plugin called Easy Content Types, there's an option, uh, if you're familiar with the plugin, you'll know about it, uh, that allows us to display meta information that we've added to our post. Well, the way that I'm displaying the meta information to the post, which you can see right here, is by using this exact same sort of function. Basically, all I'm doing is setting up one var variable, so let's call it this, um, just let's just say extra content um, and now we're gonna up here we're just gonna define extra content uh, this is my extra content 
So all I did is basically set up another variable that holds all of the additional post information, and then I simply appended it to the main post content. Um, except in this one, I've got a whole bunch of options in here where I'm saying, okay, this is the kind of field I want to display, this is the kind of field. Uh, there's an option he in here that says render an image or don't render an image, so you see if I change that, uh, now that image is displayed as a, U as a URL. So there's a lot of different things that you can do all based on this very, very simple concept. Um, and that's one of the core things about WordPress plugin development is actually knowing a lot of these really, really simple tricks that you have available to you and realizing that they're not just silly little things that you can do for saying, hey, this is my extra content. No, it's actually something you can use for extremely useful functions. Um, there's a reason that people write a lot of tutorials with very basic information about things like this. It's because they're really useful. So um, as I continue this plugin in further parts, I'm going to continue showing you little tricks like this that are actually really useful, even if they don't seem like they are at first. Um, so I hope you follow this, and I hope it's all made sense, and I hope you'll continue watching. Thanks so much.